Go. Smooth transition, I think. Um, hi guys, uh, we have a little video for you today, uh, sort of finishing up our lesson, The Fall of the West. Um, and if we're going to title a video, The Fall of the West, I think the question that should be occurring to you is, why did the West fall? Um, and it's hard to speak for other people, but I think traditionally, in high school history classes, the easiest answer that's given to you about why the West fell is that it's because the Germanic tribes invaded and took over the empire. And in class this week, we discussed some reasons why that might not be true. And we also introduced the idea of diminishing marginal returns and the stress that this placed on the empire. Um, so, just to review a couple dates along that line, if we're going to say, if, if, if you think that it's because of the Germanic tribes, if that's why the West fell, uh, then 378 is going to be a really important date uh, for making that argument. Because in 378, um, the Visigoths defeat the Romans. Wow, the Romans have been defeated by a Germanic tribe. That must be the beginning. More valid sounds. <laughs> Uh, if, on the other hand, uh, you consider diminishing marginal returns and the pressure of having uh, a large standing army in an empire that isn't expanding, then 403, when the Roman army pulls out of Britain, that's going to be a date that you definitely want to be able to speak about. Hello! Why are you leaving? <laughs> Don't leave! Stay! Um, so, there are now just a couple of dates that we wanted to fill in at the end. So, everyone in class should have gotten up to 403. Uh, the next date we want to share with you, though, is the date 451. Um, because uh, the Battle of... Uh, now, I'm from uh, Southern North America, Central North America, uh, and so, you know, where I'm from, we'd call this the Battle of Chattels. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, how would a true Francophile pronounce this? Le Bataille de Chalon. 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 Okay. Very important. So this is the Battle of Chalon. Maybe. Um, and this is the final showdown between the Romans and the Huns. We've heard the Huns are coming, the Huns are coming, the Huns are coming, the Huns are why the Visigoths came in, the Huns are why the Vandals came in, the ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, finally, the Huns invade Gaul, and the Western Roman army puts up a wonderful fight, aided again by German mercenaries, and defeats the Hunnish invasion. And the Huns then retreat out of the side of the empire. So the Battle of Chalon is remembered as a great Roman victory. And since we're talking about the fall of the West, I think we can say it's the last great victory of the Western Empire. However, if you look at the front of your note sheet, you'll see that the Vandals have taken over North Africa. And in taking over North Africa, this cuts up the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean isn't uniting the empire anymore, it's dividing it. Some of the internet connections that we spoke about, metaphorically, are broken. And the Vandals use North Africa as a base to launch their navy for attacks on other parts of the empire. And they actually go out, and in 455, they send ships to Rome, go in and actually sack Rome, and they steal goods from the city of Rome. And they do such a damaging job that later, people will say, oh, you're being so destructive, you're acting like a Vandal. And that's where in English our term to vandalize comes from. To act like a Germanic tribesman who took over Africa who sacked Rome in 455. In retaliation for this, to get back at the Vandals and to recover the Mediterranean, the Romans launch a huge naval expedition. They build a huge fleet, which in Bulgarian is flot, um, to destroy the Vandals once and for all. You can kind of think of echoes of the Third Carthaginian War here. 
Um, and so this happens in 468. And you can see just from the title, it's not successful. Go, 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 go. The Roman fleet sinks. A combination of bad weather and brave vandals destroys the fleet. And at that time, a fleet is the most expensive military expedition that you could launch. So for the Romans to lose their fleet, this is a disaster from which they could not recover. And this leads us forward to what is the traditional date for the fall of the West. Um, ah, I'm falling. <laughs> um, and, but we have, a, we have a, an asterisk here because it's the traditional but incorrect date for the fall of the West. Uh, ah, almost, I'm not falling. <laughs> <laughs> almost no uh, historian actually believes that the West fell exactly in 476. Uh, this was a date that was invented in the 6th century. So this is a date that we've been living with for uh, more than a thousand years. The reason why people choose 476 for the fall of the Western Empire is super simple. Because in 476, a German mercenary general who's been part of the Roman army, whose name is Odo Walker, takes over, gets rid of the emperor, and says that he is in charge of the West, but he does not claim to be emperor. So the question, when did the West stop being an empire? Well, when was the last emperor? 476. Okay, so the empire must have fallen in 476. Well, yeah, if your only definition of empire is a place with an emperor, then yeah. But, if it has to do with the country ruling other countries, Odo Walker rules other countries, and there's still other areas in the West. Or maybe you want to say the West fell even before 476. Um, either way, that's something that's up to you, but I think a good way to study this class is to consider when the West actually fell. And one other important thing that you really should be able to do is discuss the two primary reasons for the fall of the West. We've emphasized diminishing marginal returns as being the most important, but you also need to talk about the Germanic invasions, and you need to be able to balance those two together. All right, special effects. Cut.